Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins, I'm a Linode Developer Advocate, and what we're going to be doing in this video is setting up our very own instance of Uptime Kuma on Linode. Now, first, Uptime Kuma is a popular application on the home lab space, so a, a really good way to monitor all of your local services here. This is one I set up real quick on my local server, and you can see it's monitoring things that are hosted locally to me, such as Calibre Web, Jellyfin RStudio, my personal NAS at home, VS Code, Yacht, and some others. It's really good at letting me know if these are up or down. There's a lot of different features. You can see I have a message board of all the uh, ups and downs, as well as quick stats. I have settings, and I have a dedicated status page in which I can see a different view of all my services categorized however I want. But recently, Linode went ahead and introduced a really easy one-click installer so you can get Uptime Kuma up and running on your very own instance of Linode with ease. And just to note before we go further into this video, if you don't have an account over on Linode, you can get a $100 60-day credit, so you go ahead, follow along, and try this out for yourself. This over here is the actual GitHub page if you're interested in seeing a live demo before you go ahead and play around with it if you would like to as well as view all the different features. We're gonna be going over creating some basic entries so we could go ahead and monitor some servers over on the node, but we're not gonna be diving into every single little feature that this offers. There is quite a bit, so you can learn more about that here. So with all that, let's go ahead and dive on in and get this installed over on the node. So before we go ahead and dive too far into this, why might you want to run this on Linode instead of some home lab or some small home server? Really, there is a number of reasons. One, this will be hosted on the web, so you'll have access to it just about anywhere. And with the option for two-factor authentication and some other security settings, it's really a good option. Additionally, it's incredibly lightweight, so you can run it on other the nodes with other services side by side using something like Docker if you'd like to install it that way or if you're somebody who runs a lot of different servers for a lot of different clients, you could go ahead and set up one of these with all your different IP addresses or domain names or whatever it may be and set up various alerts. So then you'll be notified if a service does go down so you can go ahead and fix it as quick as possible. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and set this up. We are on the Linode Create page. All you need to do is go over to Marketplace and scroll down here to Uptime Kuma. It will be right here. If you want some more information, you can click the little I. It will bring up some stuff right there. It is a free, comprehensive, and fancy monitoring solution. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a select and scroll down here. Now, there is an option to go ahead and install this on a domain name. And I played around with this, tested it out. If you do want to go ahead and install it on a domain name, you're going to want to go ahead and input an email address. And then down here, you're gonna to want to connect your Linode API token to it. This is a pretty cool tool that Linode offers that will allow you to easily input the key there, and then it will take care of setting up all the proper A records or whatever it may need to be to set up this as a domain. So you'd go and generate one of those, paste it on in here, and then put whatever domain names you would like. For this example, I'm gonna go ahead and just do this through an IP address that's completely optional and we'll leave some resources down below so you can learn a little bit more about the DNS manager through the node. So with that, I do want to go ahead and create a limited pseudo user. I'm just gonna call myself Brandon, give myself a limited pseudo user password. I'm gonna leave SSH key for blank. We'll also leave some resources on that if you're interested. Here, select an image. The only option is Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. That is a good option. Uh, for region, go ahead and select the service closest to you or your target audience. For me, that's gonna be the California server. And here, we're gonna go shared CPU and go with the Nanode one gig. Starting at $5 a month, it's really not too bad. And like I said, this is lightweight, so you can stack up some other services on it as well if you would like to. And as your need increases, you can go ahead and upgrade your plans as you see fit. So from here, we're gonna give it a label. I'm just gonna call this dash tutorial for now. And then last but not least, let's give this a super strong, complicated, secure root password. So from there, that is just about it. You could set up backups if you'd like to, but for now, I think we are looking good. So let's go ahead and click on Create Linode, and there we go, it's provisioning. Like always, if you'd like to go ahead and monitor specifically what it's doing with these one-click installers, we could go ahead and just launch our Lish console here. So now we can kind of see some of the stuff it's doing. It's working some firewalls, it's moving some files around, it's doing what it needs to do to go ahead and 
basically do all the heavy lifting for us for installing uptime Guma. And there we go. We can see the installation is complete right there. It took about five to 10 minutes. So what we could do, we don't really need to do anything else in CLI. So close this out. So let's go ahead and grab our IP address here. And then what we could do is open up a new tab, give that a paste and then type in 3001. That is the default port hit enter. And then we'll see uptime Kuma. So what we could do is create our administrator administrator account, type in your username. I'm just going with my name, give yourself a password. And you can see here, this connection is not secure. It's your own server. It's fine. But if you did want this to be secure and you wanted other people to access it just fine, that's when one of the reasons why you'd want to go ahead and use an IP address. So click create save and there we are we are in uptime kuma so before we go ahead and create a new service one thing that we could do is go over to settings and see some of the general options that we have available to us we have our time zone it went ahead and pulled that correctly probably to do that this is the california server we have the primary base url it does support steam functionality so if you have a steam api key and you want to monitor your game servers you could go ahead and do that under appearance we have the option for theming so we could go light Ugh darker auto let's let's keep it on dark over notifications we can set up various notifications we have history there's not much going on and then we have security right here is that two-factor authentication that i mentioned earlier that you could go ahead and set up if you want to and then there's backups so you could go ahead and export or import various backups if you want to for example pull your entire local instance and put it up on uptime kuma and then go edit the ip addresses or whatever you need to do and then of course about you could get some information here so with all that, let's go ahead and create a new monitor. So to do that, just click add new monitor. And here we have a lot of different options. So monitor type, this is everything it supports. We have HTTP or HTTPS, TCP port. That's really good for local networks or if you have something on the same server or even on different servers that you're monitoring that specific application port. And then we have standard ping, we have HTTP, but looking for a keyword. And then we have DNS uptime push and of course Steam game servers. So one of the most basic things is just general HTTPS. We could give it a, a friendly name. So for this, I could just do something like Tech Hut and then I could type in my URL for that website. And then I have my heartbeat interval. So how often is it gonna check? I can ignore SSL warnings. And down here is the accepted status codes. Generally anything in the 200 range is gonna be just an okay, it's perfectly fine. Anything in the 300 range is going to be a redirect code. Anything in the 400 range is going to be like a 404 error. Something's wrong with your website. It's your fault. And if there's a 500 error, that means something with the server that you're trying to connect to has an issue. Uh, tags, if you have a lot of services, this can get really handy. So for example, if I just wanted to create a quick tag, call it web, I could give this a blue color value and then I can hit add. So now that has that tag. There's some additional options too. We could set up notifications if we would like to. And then we have HTTP options. So it's generally better to use these because instead of like how I have this set up at the moment, it will go ahead and load that entire web page every 60 seconds. If you don't have that many visitors, it can kind of mess up your analytics or kind of bog it down depending on the website and all that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. We have HTTP base sick authentication, username and password as well. So just with this basic entry, if I go ahead and click on save, you can see that it was added successfully and I'm getting the 200 message from techcut.tv. So it is up. And the longer I have this in my server, the more data we will start collecting about the uptime. You can see the initial connection was kind of slow at 147 milliseconds. And this will progress and we'll start getting average response times and things like that. So while that kind of fills in some data, let's go ahead and create another monitor. Here, I'm going to change the type. Let's say we want to do a TCP port monitoring. So we're going to see if a specific port will give us a positive feedback for connectivity. So let's say, for example, I wanted to go ahead and check if my uh, Jellyfin instance is up from an external network. This is a thing I'm hosting on my home server, but I do have this port open. So this should give me a positive connection. So what I'm gonna do here is paste in my IP address. I am gonna block this off so you can't see it. We have 8096, that is the port that is open. And then we have the heartbeat interval. Uh, one thing, upside down mode, this, this will give you the opposite of what you'd expect. So if I wanted to show that 
it is down if it's actually up. That's what I would use. There's not too many use cases for upside down mode, but if you wanted something to display as okay if it's down, this is an example. Something could be like an unsecure port on your home network or something like that that you generally want it to stay green. That's something you could use, but very specific use cases for that. For tags, I'm gonna create another one. I'm gonna call this media and let's make that green. And now we can see it was added successfully. Ooh, we have a down. So what you can do to go edit this if you make some sort of error is just go right over here, click on edit. And I did make an error. This is the wrong port. I meant to do 96. So that's what it will look like if it is down. Now, if I go ahead and click on save, we should get a message saying that Jellyfin external is now up. And then we can see up over here, this little progress bar, first it was down, and now we are live and everything is good to go. Now, if we migrate over here to Tech Hut, this first one we created, we can kind of see some of the feedback for the response rates we're getting, as well as the status messages and all that. So overall, this is a really nice looking platform just to go ahead and monitor all your different services, websites. We can add DNS. So if I wanted to do that, I could just go DNS. Friendly name, I could just ping Google or check to make sure the Google DNS records are uh, there. Actually, let's change this to Facebook because Facebook is good at messing up their DNS. Facebook.com, that's fine for the Cloudflare server. And let's uh, go ahead and save that. And at the moment, Facebook DNS is currently up. <laughs> and of course, over here we have the status page. So you can create a new status page if you'd like to. I'm gonna call this testing. And then here we have this page. So this is something that you could share externally if you want certain people to see specific things. So we could add a description and we can definitely switch that to the dark theme, show tags. And then from here you could add some services. So I can add descriptions there. I can add a group. This is services and then add a monitor. So I would just pick one of these. So let's say we want to monitor Facebook and we could see that that is up so I can save. And now this is that page. So you could have, if you have a lot of different things going on or maybe other clients who you want to have access to very specific services or very specific monitors, you could go ahead and set this up as well. Now, before we end off here, I just wanted to jump back to my local connection just so I could kind of show you guys what some of these look like. It's like I said, it's incredibly fancy, just looks really good. If I go to something that's gonna give me uh, some variable in the data, maybe Jellyfin here, you could see at one point I had a one millisecond response time when it's usually zero. That's super low because that's on my home network. But if I go to something like my Jellyfin external, I'm viewing this from the outside in, you could see the response times are usually around the 10 millisecond range. And my uptime generally is very good. So that is how you set up Uptime Kuma on Linode using their one-click installer. Like I said, if you already have a Linode spun up running Docker, for instance, the, there's two commands you need to run to get this up and going with just your standard setup. But the Linode one-click thing is really cool because it integrates that uh, domain API with it. So it makes it really easy to get that set up. So with that, if you enjoyed this, make sure you like this video and subscribe for more cloud computing content just like this. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.